Jeremy, you remember when we played at um we played at uh, uh the Lincoln Center when they first opened it up and we were the right. band to play for the acoustics? Sure, and sure. We 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 were playing, man, and Dwayne his skin color was green. He looked yeah. really, really oh. small. And I said, D, you look you don't look good, man. He said, I'm I'm cool. I said I said, D, you don't look good, man. You should probably go to the doctor. He said, I'll go. And I think he ended up going the next day, and that's when they found out he had those medical issues. And, you know, I went to see him in the hospital, and, and Wendy was there, and the doctor said, in all my years of medicine, I never saw anybody with these levels walk into the hospital. You shouldn't be around. Mm -hmm. And it really scared me because, you know, Dwayne, you know, he's a little younger than me, but he was like my brother. And just to know that I actually, he was actually as sick as I thought he was, but then I thought about it later. You know, he he wanted to play music so bad. It was just so much a part of his spirit that he knew he was sick, but he just he had to play music. And his love for music, he was going to be on that bandstand whether he fell over playing that well, bass. Well, Man, look, well, let me let me let me let me tell you. I got to tell you. I got to tell you about this. I was I wasn't sure if I really even wanted to bring up this story, but around that same time, I was playing a lot at Lincoln Center um, with some bands dealing with the acoustics and things like that. <coughs> And um, we, we're on a gig. We're on a gig, I believe, in, in the uh, in the Allen room. And uh, before then, we're eating and same thing. Dwayne was saying, "Yeah, I'm ha I was just in the hospital the other day. I'm having some issues with my kidney, whatever." Then uh, we do the gig. We're playing. In the middle of the gig, he goes to. Uh, he said, "He's he says, I gotta stop for a second. I'm like, okay, all right." He's like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna get some water. He gets some water. He comes back. He's cool. We're playing the gig. So we're playing. I'll never forget this. This is like a." It was a really powerful time in my life. He's playing. He's playing. Uh, we're playing "Stomp at the Savoy." I still remember it. And we're playing, and I kind of feel. I don't know why, but I feel like I need to just turn around. So I turn around and I look at Dwayne, and I look at him, and his and his face is blank, and his eyes are just white. Mm -hmm. And and he's playing, and he starts falling backwards. And he's and he's falling down, and. I didn't know whether to I wouldn't wonder whether to catch his base or to catch him because both were going down. But before that point where they split, I'm looking at Dwayne going backwards where his face is blank. And he's still playing the tune, man. Mm -hmm. Like killing the tune. Like still playing all the changes with no face. He, he I mean it was just, it was just both the scariest and most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life, man. Yeah, he, and, he, he, I mean, he he was just like you said, just like he said, he was gonna play this music, at you know, no matter what, and he never complained about anything. He never told you, you know, you know, we're all we all have struggles, and we all, I'm, you know, I'm I'm the first to see my friends start start complaining about some shit. He was just not like that, man. I mean, so what, he's so, just so, just a proud, strong person, just a proud and strong man. And that I so really what what do, what do y'all what do y'all think uh, made him so driven that way? Uh, I, what, I mean, because some sometimes, sometimes, I mean, I mean, let's get real. Sometimes there are people who recognize the end of the road, and they see that, and they become driven to a certain respect because they see that coming. I mean, what was it about him that made him so driven? I don't I think, think that he uh, had uh, that. He had that earlier on, Willie. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Back in when driven. I met him in college. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as a roommate, he had that drive. You know, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he understood his mortality later on as he got sick. But mm -hmm. I think that's something that he had when I met him at 18, 17 years old. He he was just very mature beyond his his age, and he. It wasn't that he loved music. He was music. Yeah, I think that I think that you know the. Hopefully is the case. Uh, I know it's the case with a lot of us here right now. But I think hopefully which is the case. For musicians in, in, in general, is that you get uh, so inspired by music that you realize, you come to the realization that this is the only thing that you want to do, and really, in, in, in a lot of respects, the only thing you can do. I don't really, I don't really see myself doing anything else or wanting to do anything else, and I think that's uh, very important uh, about Dwayne. It's like everybody said, he he never was the type to ask for a handout. He was very proud. I mean, I think everybody's pretty much got a, an anecdote that they can share about, you know, how Dwayne looked like he was on the outs and he, you know, he still fought to come back. I remember when he just got his kidney, his new kidney, and things were looking up, and we had this tour. That was in <laughs> December of two years ago, I believe, and then we had this tour coming up in February, 
And, uh, you know, Dwayne, it, by all accounts, he's like, yes, I'm making a tour. He's still in the hospital, right? But I'm making a tour. Mm -hmm. And and Wendy's like, yeah, I don't know if he's going to be able to make it. I, and, you know, I'm at this point, I'm deferring to Wendy because I didn't want to seem like the, 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 the greedy band leader that's just like, yo, look, we need him. I don't care. Get him out. Get that IV off him. But she was she was like, well, you know, he, I think he might be able to make it. And Dwayne was always staunch. He was like, no, I'm making this tour. And that's, that's you know, that, that kind of drive. Uh, again, you know, Antonio and, and Oren have known him, you know, way longer than I have. But I mean, from what I could attest to, I, I feel like it's 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 something that really it is is in all of us, and it should be in all of us at this point, especially. Well, there's a di there's a difference between. I think there's a big difference, uh, you know. And, and Phil Woods told, mentioned, said this to me one time. He said there's a difference between people who want to play the music and need to play the music. And uh, I think. I think Dwayne needed to play music. I know yeah. I needed to play the music. Yeah, yeah, you're that, right. But I think, awesome. as Antonio said, he was music, man. That yeah. was everything. Yeah. He yeah. just was music. <laughs> There's also the other element that to add in there, I mean, is that Dwayne was an amazing father and husband. So there was a certain point, I mean, we can all talk about, you know, the music that was in him, but he also stood on that bandstand when he knew he couldn't for that family. Yeah. And and, and that's that's a, I mean, being a father myself and, and all the other fathers that are lined up here, there's many a times we don't want to go do the gig, you know? Mm -hmm. And and but what really gets up us up out of the house to go do the gigs, <laughs> those two or three or however many people are in the house which you uh, that you have to support. Exactly. And that's that's a true story. Dwayne I mean that's the reality of Dwayne had to go out there and do a bunch of gigs, and he. On top of that, he never complained. He didn't say, "Oh, I'm sick. Oh, I gotta go." I've never heard him use the term that I hate, ball and chain. I never heard him say that. I never heard him say anything like, Agreed. "Oh, man, this little right. knucklehead kid." I never heard any of that. Nothing. That, you know, so uh, I was, uh, he was. We can talk about his musicality, and that's great. But there was also a dedication to to his household. There well, was his life. Through all of that. I think there was also a, a, an immense humility in his spirit. And a wisdom in his spirit, because although, and you know, I've known him a little while too. Uh, we played music as far back as I believe Dwayne's records, Orange. No, you got you got to go far back. You were no, I'm, 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 I'm too old to remember anymore. Yeah, you know, you go back further than that. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> back back to when I was skinnier than. Before I, back, I got skinny again, yeah. But you can't throw that in there, man. <laughs> but we ain't got the telling stories here. <laughs> well, I can just stand up now. <laughs> yeah, if, he, if, he live, if, he, if he lifts his shirt up, I'm leaving. <laughs> That's the porn you were talking about. Uh, uh, uh. But it, it came from his humility as a human being and 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 his wisdom. One of the things I learned from Dwayne, and, and Dwayne was, I learned something from Dwayne Berno every time I came in contact with him. And the thing, I, it was either musical or something else. Consummate professional, true, never complained, always on time, stuff like that. But Dwayne, it wasn't like Dwayne didn't have those thoughts. All that stuff that I think it was Oren just said that you never heard him say, Dwayne could say it all with a look. <laughs> and, 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 and anybody that's seen that look is either smiling or laughing right now. Because, yeah, I saw that look when he first came up to me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he would always, if, if, if he could sense with me personally, and and I, you know, I personally never was the one who had the reputation of holding my tongue. And a lot of times when Dwayne was on the set, I could be cool because I knew I wasn't alone. He'd look at me and say, with his eyes and with his spirit, say, "Look, man, we in this thing together, and we'll get out of it and through it together, and it, it'll be cool." And and a lot of times that got us, that got me through, and it taught me a lot, you know. It's real important to, to keep trying to grow. I think his humility, his, the professionalism, and the way he was always adding the music was because he was always learning. You know what I mean? So he was always growing. 
and and you you have to be in a certain kind of state of humility to learn because a new idea can be grafted onto a closed mind. Yeah, I think it was, I think he was humble when it came to music, and he was also humble when he came to life. Yeah, you know, I think. And I, yeah, yeah, and you, you have to be you have to be that kind you have to have that kind of humility to be to be even get anywhere near to be the close close to the kind of man that that he was, and that's that's something that is that is that is missing, and that, that I'm going to miss about him.